Hi, good morning. This is Saturday, March 28th, I think, um, or, or 27th. Um, I'm going to do some glazing this morning. Um, I'm born in Nova Scotia. This is my glaze area, and uh, I have a lot of very large bowls to glaze today. Um, so I was going to show you how I do one style of the landscape bowls that I do. Um, because we live on the coast, you can't tell from in here because it's in the back of the building, and my windows are all overlooking the ocean, and I can see the in the distance the other shoreline. Uh, and so it has a feeling of sky, thin area of land, and then the water underneath. So I've been doing a whole series of pieces uh, based on that. And this is a small plate I can show you. Um, get a little closer. So it has a real feeling of the shoreline that's right around me. Um, it's a very complicated way of glazing, and it takes a long time. But when you start and do a piece, it's very quick. Uh, but the setup takes a long time, and the cleanup takes a long time. So I usually do many pieces at the same time. Um, and so I've got six very large balls to do. I have a bright blue, I have a creamy yellow oatmeal, a apple green, a dark green. I've got a uh, tomato red glaze there. Um, I've got a grayish blue glaze there. Uh, and then I have a sort of translucent gray, um, sort of has a washy kind of effect, and then I have an oatmeal. Uh, so this, these glazes, I try to pour them so that I get the color of the glaze to show through on the piece, but I also have it overlap with the next glaze. So you have two glazes on top of each other, but then there'll be a part of the, that glaze that's still visible. And then the next glaze overlaps again trying to leave a little bit of the original of the second glaze so you can still see it. So it's complicated it, 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 with six, seven glazes, three, six, eight glazes, it, it gets really sort of hard to keep total control, which is part of the fun because every piece comes out different. Um, so I'm going to do, I won't do my really large ones. I've got two here that I threw with 25 pounds of clay and then these ones are 12 and a half pounds of clay. Um, so the 12 and a half pounds one will be a little easier. Um, it could get messy with the big ones, so I'll put you through that. But um, okay, it's a basic bowl. It's got a nice inside and the outside. The outside I probably won't glaze um, right at this moment because you have to wait for the inside to dry and then you turn it on your hand like this and pour glaze around uh, while you're spinning it, basically. Your hand is rotating it and you can pour the glaze but I have to wait for the inside to dry before I can do that. Um, so I won't do that right at this moment. And the way I hold them so that I don't uh, actually drop them is with my hand like this on the top and then sometimes I have to try and balance with my hand like that on the back. So I make sure my foot isn't too wide so I can still grip it. Uh, so you can pour down and then I usually have to turn it around and pour down the other side and you'll see, if you can see, it'll be a little bit in the distance at first, but anyway, Let's get started. Right. I've stirred all the glazes. They're actually, they have a little container in each one, which I just swish around a little bit. And this is the oatmeal. And I've got to do it so I don't splash onto the floor. Making sure I don't leave any areas on glaze. Now this is I have a sponge at each place so I can wipe my hand, rotate it, rotate it just a touch. And then pour the glaze overlapping just a tiny bit. And I kind of make the kind of mountainous kind of feel to the color. So you've got a rolling hill type of look. We don't have mountains here, but, and if you get glaze on your finger, you have to have a sponge there so you can actually wipe it off. See, I'm overlapping the oatmeal. No glaze on my hand. And now you go to the next glaze. These two both are gray, so I use the same container. Now I'm going to overlap again. Just a little on my finger that time. Because I have to touch the pot and I don't want to get fingerprints. Now my left hand is already getting tired. 
So that's why these big pieces are hard. Now I've watered the glazes down to do this so they don't get too heavy. This is the tomato red. That one really stains on your fingers. So much iron in it. I always mean to put these on little chairs so I don't have to bend over as far. Now those are the, the kind of hills in the distance. Now I've got the dark green. Sponges everywhere. This is the apple green. My hand is hurting on the back because my fingers are gripping. So angling the ball is kind of important. resembles the beach a little bit. It doesn't come out that yellow. It's actually more of a sandy oatmeal color. I wish it came out that yellow. I've got a bright yellow if I want to use it, but it's too much. Okay, so you get the idea. And then the blue, I can rest this on the side of the bucket so it's a little easier. It's just position at the bottom, waving it so you get that feeling of the coastline again. All right, you see it? There you go, so the oatmeal is at the top. Now in some of the pieces I've done clouds, um, but I, I found it too much. Uh, but what I do is in the green areas there, going into the brown, I have a sponge that I've made in the shape of a triangle, sort of a tall, thin triangle. And I dab it into my deep green glaze and I will actually pad that up and down over the piece and it gives it a feeling of the woods in the distance. So this isn't finished as it is. Uh, I still have a little bit of touch up to do. Um, and, um, and you know, the oatmeal that's kind of yellow there will actually go back a little bit. It's a, it actually is really nice, but it, it goes back to that sandy yellow color. Um, but I'm going to glaze all six of these bowls, so my hand is going to be really tired. And then later on, I will turn them upside down. Um, and sometimes I sit a wheel next to the bucket of glaze I'm going to put on the back. And I just do a simple sit straight glaze on the back. And uh, then I can actually rotate it over the bucket and be pouring while it's turning. So that's an easy way of doing it, I think, because these, this is heavy. My fingers are hurting after doing that ball. Alrighty, well, this is a short video. I try to keep them to less than 15 minutes. Um, but basically, if you're gonna do something like this with so many glazes, it's a good idea to have a lot to do, um, rather than just one piece. Because once I've done this, I did really well there. I didn't spill any on the floor. You know, I usually mop this, the floor in this area as soon as I've done this type of glazing. And because um, uh, you know, of course, you know, this is the dust that we have to worry about, um, not the wet glaze. But, uh, alrighty, this is Vaughan in Nova Scotia. Just giving you a look at my Buckets R Us glaze room. All right, thanks for stopping in and let me know if you like the video.